Good morning, you guys. It's your boy Ben Mahari here. Represent Mahari Nation Sports Podcast. Much love to the entire LDBC and the basketball community. You understand what I'm saying? If you want to check out more basketball content, tune into my show, Basketball Conversations, every Friday night, 9 p.m. Central Time. This is where we discuss basketball-related topics, news, debates, and everything else in the world of basketball. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to get all the latest notifications when I start dropping videos and live streams. And please spread the word about the channel. All right. This is going to be another uh, episode of the of the uh, morning episode called the Historical Perspective. And we're actually going to touch upon one of the greatest, probably the greatest team in college basketball history, never to win the national championship. And who am I talking about? Well, we're going to talk about the 2004-2005 Illinois Fighting Alumni. Um, that team enjoyed their their greatest their greatest regular season in the history of their program. Um, that team was pretty much a guard orientated type of team, and this was pretty much their hundredth season of varsity basketball. And ironically, this was Bruce Weber's uh, second season. Uh, as the coach of the Illinois Founding Alumni, because Bill Self pretty much recruited some of the top, some of the players that became monumental figures of their of the 2005 team before accepting the dream job to going in into Kansas, and then Bruce Weber basically took over that team. But that team was pretty much tied an all time NCAA record for victories in a season with 37 victories, which. Was our, which has already been surpassed by the 2011-2012 Kentucky Wildcats with 38 victories, and when they went on to win the national title, and the Kentucky team of the of the then undefeated team of 2014-2015 when they won 38 straight games before losing to Wisconsin in the uh, semifinals in Indianapolis. All right, now the one thing that team emphasized more on that particular year was this was the team that relied on excellent ball movement on offense which they led the nation in steals and they always had a consistent flow in terms of their passing and they always looked for three-point shots and the reason why they did was because they were led by a three-guard starting lineup and pretty much did not rely on their size on their height like many other teams would and this is going to be a factor as we get into this okay so the Illinois team pretty much relied on their three-point shooting and for its offensive firepower, and effectively, largely that contributed to the team chemistry that it was among along the Star Five, which basically was unchanged over the two previous seasons. Okay, on the defensive side of the ball, the team was one of the best at defending the three-point shot, and they only gave up 77 points per game while allowing 60. Actually, say I should say uh, Illinois averaged about 77 points per game while they allow the opposition to score 61 points per game, which is a point differential of 16 total points. And when you look at their national stats, they were fourth in the nation in points scored with over 3,002 points. They were they led the nation in its total assists with 727 assists, ninth in rebounding with about 1,338 rebounds. All right. They, they were second in the nation in three points made three-point uh, field goals made with 344 threes, and they were fourth in the nation in attempts with 877 three-point attempts. And as like I said before, they were basically eighth in the nation in terms of points allowed on the defensive side of the ball, okay, which is basically was 2,382. But that starting lineup was basically, like I said, was a composed of a, th- a three-guard starting lineup. Um, point guard, Their point guard was obviously Mr. Darren Williams, who went on to be a went on to be a four time All Star in the NBA and was a junior on that team? Okay. Also, they had a speedster in D Brown that played the small forward position. That also was a guy that pretty much can rely on to penetrate and kick. And he always was a guy that always made things happen on the fast break. Their top scorer was basically Luther Head, who played the shoot who played a shooting guard position. And then their two big guys were basically Roger Powell Jr. And then their center was James Augustine. Okay. And that team was pretty much was pretty much a team that pretty much played a lot of the small ball that you norm that you see in today's basketball, but they were pretty much successful with that. Okay. So when they started out the season, um, that Illinois team began the season winning their first 29 uh, games. 
and will finish and basically was the third best start in Big Ten history, basically tying the 12th best start in NCAA annuals. They won their, they basically won their second ever game against a number one ranked opponent by crushing Wake Forest 91 to 73 at, at basically Assembly Hall. Okay. For pretty much after that win, the fighting alumni pretty much took over as the number one overall team in the nation and pretty much held it on for pretty much the entire regular season, which went, went on a run of basically 15 straight weeks. And they pretty much were undefeated. They went on, they pretty much finished that season winning their first 29 games before losing to Ohio State at a buzzer beater on their final game of the regular season. Now, you think about that for a moment. If they would have held on to beat Ohio State on their final game, they could have possibly they could have had a good possibility to finish out that season undefeated. But whatever said mate, it didn't have to be the case. But they went on to cruise through the Big Ten regular season. They went 15 and 1 in the Big Ten and went on to win the regular season and tournament championships. And there was no doubt they were basically the undisputed uh, favorites to win the national championship. But also we cannot forget. The uh, North Carolina Tar Heels were also were going through a resurgent type of season, though, there, too. But we're going to get into that a little bit later. So we get into the accolades of that team. Bruce Weber became the National uh, Coach of the Year by nine different organizations. And D. Brown, who was basically their starting forward, who was basically the one-man fast break, was, was named the Sporting News National Player of the Year and swept all conference honors as well, being named as both Big Ten Player of the Year and Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year. Three other players also earned All-American honors in that same season for the very first time in their school history. With the addition of D. Brown, Darren Williams, and Luther Head were also named consent, consensus second team All-Americans. Following that season, Williams and Head were chosen, to, chosen in the first round of the NBA draft. Pretty much, uh, Darren Williams was drafted third overall by the Jazz, and Luther Head was drafted 24th overall by the Houston Rockets. But it wasn't easy during that time in the in the uh, NCAA tournament. Despite, you know, sweeping through their uh, Big Ten uh, tournament, you know what I mean, and pretty much pretty much earning the number one overall seed in the entire tournament, they went they went they went through a bit of a patch against uh against uh uh Arizona. Arizona was pretty much a tough team that pretty that pretty much was scraping through around the regular season and they pretty much, they pretty much had to come back. This game between between against Arizona was perhaps one of the greatest games you'll ever ever find. If you get ever a chance to check out that game on YouTube, check it out. The energy in that building was unbelievable. And the ironic thing is, they played in the Chicago Regional, where they were playing at DePaul University. But in that Elite Eight matchup against Arizona, due to some poor shooting by Illinois behind the three point line. And thanks to the great play of both of their senior leaders, of both Salim Stoudemire and Shannon Pry of uh, Arizona, basically the the uh, Arizona Wildcats were up by 15 with pretty much about around four and a half minutes to go in the game before coming back to tie the game at 80 and then sending the game into overtime. Okay, and pretty much it was triggered by several steals by Darren Williams and by some clutch shots. You know what I mean? Several of them from basically NBA three-point range. And when the three-point shot made by Darren Williams to tie the game at 80, I can tell you that watching it from the screen, and I remember that as a kid, watching it from you know television, when, when Darren Williams knocked down that three-pointer, I kid you not, it felt like an explosion went off in the building. And the game was tied, and then the game went into OT, in which the, uh, the Illinois alumni pretty much were up by seven with about two minutes, with about three and a half minutes to go before Arizona put up a good comeback, cut the lead to one, and then had a chance to win the game until Hassan Adams took a desperation three that went off the glass, but it didn't even touch the rim. And pretty much, uh, Illinois made it back to the Final Four for the for once again for the fifth time in school history, but the first time since their great team in 1989. And after blowing out, uh, the unit of knowing about Louisville for their biggest margin of victory at the tournament. They went out to, against the national championship game, pretty much against the North Carolina Tar Heels, who also had a really resurgent year too. They were basically number two in the nation and they won 33 games. You know what I'm saying? And pretty much this was Roy Williams' second season as the coach of the North Carolina Tar Heels. And throughout that national championship game, 
I remember uh, that that game was going to have was going to really expose the the lack of size that Illinois had in terms of their team because their only two really good big guys, the three big guys were Jack Ingram, James Augustine, and and uh, Roger Powell Jr. But the problem was they didn't had versatility or depth in terms of their front line, and they, and if they got into foul trouble, it was going to be a problem. And remember. Sean May was pretty much one of the best post scores, you know, during that season too. And so that game, um, Sean May pretty much had his way. He was scoring at will. He was dominating on the inside and he was getting a lot of those guys in foul trouble. And pretty much that North Carolina relied on throwing the ball inside to uh, Sean May. And he pretty much got Jack Ingram and James Augustine in the foul trouble, okay? And Illinois chose the wrong game to struggle offensively, which, which they succeeded throughout the whole year when they only converted only a 12 of, of the championship game record, 40 field goal, three-point attempts. And only James Augustine played nine minutes due to foul trouble, which meant Jack Ingram would have to play huge minutes in the championship game. But... Illinois, just like what they did against Arizona, they came back, tied the game at 70 with about 233 to go until uh, North Carolina scored the last five points to basically secure their, their third net, their third national champ, actually their fourth national championship in school history. And after that, it was pretty much it was pretty much the end of that great team. And uh, you know, those guys, you know, those guys went those three of those guys like D Brown, Luther Head, and Jerry Williams went on to the NBA. But that team, that team was really a, a special team to watch because, you know, you don't really see a team that can really much co sync together and play really well together. You know what I mean? And the one thing I will always remember about that team was is that they played like they always believed that they were always going to come back and win. There was, it was a team that never quit no matter what deficit they were facing against. They always believed that they can always find a way to come back. And during the tournament against Arizona and during the national championship game, they pretty much showed their heart, you know, during those, during those adverse situations. And they deserve a lot more respect for what they were able to achieve. Even though they didn't win the ultimate goal of a national championship, that team should be up there as one, among one of the great teams in NCAA history. You know what I mean? And unfortunately, ever since that great Illinois team, they haven't been back to at least the Final Four or the Elite Eight ever since. And so I wanted to give, you know, my personal tribute and my personal respect and give you guys a little bit of an explanation of how that great team was back in back in the day in 2005. And looking back on that team, they had a little bit more depth in terms of their front line. I think they would have had a great chance to win, beat against North Carolina, but North Carolina was on a mission that year to win back the national championship. And Roy Williams was overdue for a national championship after so many years of falling short of the title back when he was coaching at Kansas. And so I want to give my personal respect to those guys because, you know, they are obviously largely, you know, a bit forgotten in terms of many of these basketball fans, not for me. But I wanted to make sure to teach you guys about this team, though, too, and take the opportunity to watch some of our games, though, too, as well. They were fun. They were exciting. You know, they basically were a small group, but they pretty much ran like gangbusters and always loved to shoot up those so many threes. And when they were hitting their threes, you could not stop them. And so let me know what you guys think of your memories of that great uh, 2004, 2005 uh, Illinois Finding Alumni team. And stay tuned for more videos throughout the day today to make sure to keep your assistance. Uh, there are subscribe buttons and the bell icons up as I drop more videos later on in the day. But y'all make sure to check it out, that team, though, guys. Check out one of their games, though, too. You'll be in for a special treat. So have a great day, guys, and I'll take y'all later.